right, hello, this is uh, the Grim Times Podcast, episode number 16. We are continuing our discussion with Carl. Uh, do you want your last name at all? or is Yeah, it... sure, I'm not afraid of anyone. Okay, yeah, I'm Jeff Jarvin, I'm out there all over the place. So this is Carl Studdard, um, next to me, and in the recording studio, our fancy uh, room with a table and a computer. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to continue our discussion on uh, alien life, and I want to just jump right into it here. We're going to talk about the uh, alien creator god comparisons. I mean, a lot of people uh, think that we actually were, um, I don't know if necessarily created by the aliens. I mean, it's possible, but um, maybe they are what took the primates and altered with them genetically, and they ended up, you know, with us. Or I don't know if we would be like a hybrid or uh, some sort of deal like that. I mean, I definitely could see them kind of um, messing with our DNA. A lot of uh, people have called it farming almost you know we we would be like their cows essentially i guess but um because you know we could be enhanced by them i i don't know i don't really know how to say it the right way um i'll let you just jump right in here and uh share your thoughts on the subject yeah i mean it seems to me that the whole idea came into being when a uh archaeologist i believe he is uh by the name of uh zachariah stitchin yeah, Sitchin. Yeah, Sitchin. Si- Sitchin. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sitchin, you know, and he supposedly can translate these uh, Sanskrit texts from the Sumerian civilization, you know, and uh, according to known history, that's probably the oldest civilization on the earth that they know of right now. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's interesting because in, in these creation myths, it overlaps with Christianity, it overlaps with Hinduism and Buddhism, um, especially when it comes to the myth about the great floods, you know, that uh, overtook the entire planet. Uh, Honestly, what do you think about uh, Sitchin? Do you uh, Um, trust him? It's hard to say. I've never really read his books or looked into his work really deeply, but I know the, the gist of it. I mean, basically that um, the Anunnaki came here and they kind of genetically altered us to be their uh, slaves, essentially the workhorses, to, uh, I don't know, was it to mine gold or mine something out of, out of the planet? Yeah, that's what supposedly gold, something about saving their planet. That's what I hear on all the, you know, conspiracy internet sites and whatnot, and um, Sitchin will tell you that we were created just as a slave labor class, really uh, doing all sorts of uh, work all around the planet, and we are simply made for a logistical reason, you know, they can't get their people over here, so create a lower being to dominate, you know. Yeah, and I respect his work. I mean, I think he dedicated a good part of his life to this idea. But in the end, I mean, I think it's kind of a narrow, it's kind of a narrow idea. And uh, it doesn't explain the whole picture. I mean, it it explains part of it. I mean, maybe where we came from, but it doesn't explain the whole thing. Like where, where does God come into play? Where does um, uh, some sort of creation come into play? I mean, maybe he covers that. I'm not sure. But as far as I know, for the most part, it just talks about the aliens and um, us being genetically, you know, manufactured by them, I guess. Well, you know, I've read The Twelfth Planet myself. I found it incredibly hard to read, um, hard to understand, just laborious in every aspect of a book. So, you know, I really don't know if he's a crackpot or not. If somebody else could come up with the same conclusions that he is, then he would be substantiated in my mind, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, you know, here are these texts, have somebody else analyze them and stuff like this, but, you know, just say, oh, I'm the only one that can do it, I I find that a little suspect, and, you know, I think you're very insightful when you say, you know, that it doesn't explain everything, even if it is the truth, like, uh, if the Anunnaki did create the human race, who created the Anunnaki? Exactly, and I think one intriguing thing about humans is that we have consciousness and i think consciousness is the key to everything consciousness may be the soul and therefore um if you look i mean people could debate this i mean um i don't know if 
I mean, it's such a touchy question. I mean, because there's so many pet lovers out there. Do pets, do animals have souls? Do we have souls? I mean, does consciousness, um, is consciousness the soul? But therefore, I'm what I'm trying to get to is, if we were just created by these aliens and we weren't uh, created in the image of God, like the Bible would say, um, what what gives us a soul? Can we have a soul without being directly created by God? Well, I, you know, I wish I knew the answers to the, those questions. Of you know, those are wonderful questions, though. I think everybody should think about, um, like, uh, and. Just to backpedal a little bit, you were talking about, you know, people's pets, you know, and uh, religion. Let's let's think about the concept of religion and the human race and how it intermingles with each other. Every single religion I've ever heard of, pretty much, makes human beings at the center of it. You think that might be some kind of flaw within, you know, our history and our ideology that's making that occur. Why is the human being the center of the universe? Why is the human being the most adored creation by a, a creator that created something as grand as the universe? Um, you know, and I think a lot of it isn't black and white like people want to think. Like, um, you know, listening to me now, you might say, oh, well, this guy, he doesn't believe in God. Well, I do. But I don't believe everything I hear in the Bible. And I think that's important to state to everyone is that I have my own thoughts and opinions on a lot of things. And that actually leads me to another great point. I mean, I could go into this. And we're definitely going to do a podcast on this in the near future. Um, if Carl's able to join me for it, uh, that'd be great. But I want to cover the Bible itself. I mean, not just as a piece of spiritual text, but a piece of historical text. And one thing that I really push on people is that, you know, you've got so many... I don't trust a very large part of the Bible at this point. And one thing that people don't realize is that the Bible that we have now, the 66-book 66 66 Bible that we have right now, that wasn't around until the year 1700. Do you know how long that is? How long after Christ? How long after... All these events have taken place. Just then we had the 66 book Bible that we all trust so much right now. That's not that long ago. And if you think about who was able to manipulate this text to make it into that 66 book Bible, do you really think that God was manipulating these people in the year 1700? I really doubt it. I don't think that he was manipulating them any more than he manipulates people right now. If somebody came up to me and said that God was working through them or doing something like that, I would be like, well... I, I halfway trust you, you know, I mean, I've, I've always been a pretty devout Christian, um, up until recently, I don't even know if I'd be called a Christian at this point, I mean, I believe in God for sure, but when somebody tries to tell me that he's working through them, I mean, I'm pretty skeptical, it's just like speaking in tongues, I mean, you're just an idiot, or you feel like you're special for some reason, I mean, that, I'm kind of going off into the rant here, I need to stop, but I mean, what I'm saying is, what we have right now, Putting your trust in, in this 66 book Bible, putting all your trust in that, that's not putting your trust in God. That's putting your trust in mankind. That's putting your trust in humans to make the right choices for what you need to know. Think about the book of Eli, the movie. It's pretty much about this man living in a post-apocalyptic world and there's only one copy of the Bible left. And that one copy of the Bible is the most wanted book on the planet. If you have that control, if you have the control of religion, you can control the world. And it is a big deal. People are going to be after that. So what I'm saying here is is just that. Don't put all your trust in, in this one piece of text that humans have manipulated for years and years and years. But going back to the Sitchin thing, I would like to see where these documents are right now, if there's anybody who would analyze them. And uh, you could even check the legitimacy of these documents. Carbon date them. I mean, whatever you have to do. Some documents you just can't. You can't date it. But, I mean, some you can. And people are getting so good about faking information now. They've actually got this way. I mean, some people have found this in Israel. Like with the Dead Sea Scrolls, they talk about finding these historical uh, pieces of literature. But a lot of the really old ones are carved into stone. And they've come up with this new way in in the Middle East of 
carving something in stone. Like, say, I would go out and do it tomorrow. They've got it such, such, um, they've got it down as such an art that they can make it seem like it was done 500 years ago. I mean, our tools now can fake to that detail. I mean, it's really discouraging that somebody would go out and do that. But think about, you could change, if you could fake a piece of evidence and make people think that it was that old, you could change the world. Through changing history, I agree. And, you know, um, the interesting thing about Sitchin, and I'm, you know, I'm sure that your uh, listeners will probably be familiar with some of this material um, if they're interested in these type of topics. But his claim to fame really was that he had translated these stone tablets and it was talking about a civilization that knew about the astronomy of the solar system, you know, about the center of our solar system being a sun and how many planets they were and how and the size of the planets. Well, like you said, Jeff, you know, they can fake artifacts. And, uh, you know, I challenge anyone that's still in high school or college, have someone explain to you how radiocarbon active dating uh, works um, and see if what they say makes sense or if it sounds like a bunch of BS because it's, it's BS. Um, who came up with the unit scale measurement to decide whether or not a particle had been this many years old based on this amount of decay. Um, you know, I'm sure people are going to post, oh, there's plenty of data and evidence, but I just don't buy it. I'm not saying that the world is, you know, 10,000 years old, like a lot of these crazy people say, but I'm not saying that it's 4.5 billion years old, like they want us to believe. Um, how do they come up with a number like that? You know? Yeah, it, it even is like, how do they know what's in the center of the earth? I mean, there maybe there's ideas to support it, but we've never gone down that far. Honestly, we've never been more than, what is it, seven or eight miles down into the earth? I mean, so I don't know where these people get their information or their ideas. I mean, I can see some of it based on, uh, um, I don't know what you would call it, like evidence on the surface, I guess. But, I mean, that's just another example of how we don't know anything for sure, but we're going to come up with some facts to support the idea of it. Well, you know, I think the main thing that, you know, I think we were trying to talk about something in this podcast and ended up talking about something else. <laughs> that happens sometimes. And, you know, I think what we were trying to talk about turned into your responsibility to take in information and take it with a grain of salt. You cannot substantiate every fact that you ever hear or ever research. You have to have your own opinions and your own belief systems. And I think that's the problem that a lot of people face. Like, just to backtrack a little bit, we were talking about, you know, Christianity and all that. And a lot of people don't know that back when Christianity was becoming a popular religion, um, most of the world was pagan. And so there was a lot of uh, conflict between the pagan and Christian world. And, uh, you know, they were killing each other. And, you know, um, whether you, you know, a lot of Christians out there might not want to admit this, but the Christians were the ones that were doing most of the killing. They were running around and killing anybody that didn't believe in Jesus. And, you know, you can argue with this all you want, people, but it's highly documented. Christians burned down the... Library of Alexandria and burnt most of the knowledge of the ancient mystery schools and what you know You might not know what that is, but the mystery school teachings were what were an accumulation of knowledge over You know thousands of year periods that were just completely burned away Before the Council of Nicaea which was a Culmination of scholars of the time in the constant uh, Constantine right yeah yeah Constantine yeah. Uh, the Emperor of Rome he decided he wanted to become a Christian so you know of course they had to connect the pagan and Christian world why do you think we have December 25th being the birth date of Jesus that also happens to be the winter solstice that's incredibly important to a pagan it's also incredibly important 
to a Christian now because they say that your Lord and Savior was born that day. But Jesus didn't turn water into wine before this council. Jesus didn't walk on water. Um, who turned water into wine in ancient history? Let's think about it. The Greek god Dionysus, maybe? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Um, you know, they combined myths and cultures so that they could control more of the world. Now, don't get me wrong, people. When I say that, it doesn't mean I'm saying God isn't real and you're an idiot. I'm saying that I believe in God still, but I don't believe in everything that it's that the Bible says. Exactly. It's a nice fairy tale, but we've got to look at the facts here. I mean, if you want to live your whole life and die thinking this way, then that's on you. But if you really are interested interested in the truth, then you've got to, you know, listen to these things and actually look them up yourself. Don't just take our word for it. Everything that we're saying is based on something that we've researched in the past. We're not just blowing smoke here. So, as long as you look this up yourself, then we've done we've done what we wanted to do. So, and and along with that uh, pagan idea is the book of Matthew talks about the virgin birth. And remember, this is the only book that mentions the virgin birth. And uh, I've always, I, I've probably stated this in a previous podcast, but one thing about Matthew is it begins with listing the genealogy of Joseph. And one of the qualifications of the Messiah, which, by the way, Jesus did not fulfill all the qualifications to be the Messiah. Uh, a lot of people overlook that. Um, not that Jesus isn't the Messiah. I'm not really going to comment on what Jesus was and was not. But what I'm saying here is that it lists the genealogy of Joseph, and Jesus has to be a descendant of Abraham to be the Messiah. And it lists this whole genealogy going from Abraham to Joseph. But really, if Matthew's correct, then how is, it's not Joseph's seed that made Jesus. It was a virgin birth. It was a divine thing. Right. So, it's... it's literally God. It's supposed to be anyway, according to the story. Yeah, and you're conflicting your own Bible with that. Right. I so agree. You've got to think about, you know, this kind of thing. And with the book of Matthew, it's junk. I would throw it out in a heartbeat. I mean, it's it's got so many errors, and he whoever wrote it just copied I think, what was it, 85% of the text of the book of uh, Mark or Luke, one of the two, and then added in, in these, you know, a few errors and the virgin birth, and that's Pretty much what he called the book. Matthew was, we don't know that Matthew wrote the book of Matthew. It was signed as anonymous, which was really rare in those days. But, and it was also written at a point in time where it would have been uh, no longer an eyewitness of Jesus. So there's no way. It was just a copy. That's pretty much all it was. But anyway, aside from trashing the book of Matthew, which I will do all day, I'm not <laughs> going to shy away from that. But anyway, back with what we were talking about before. Um, Bottom line, do you think we came from aliens? No. And here's why. You know, y'all are living your lives out there in, in the world. And I think sometimes the monotony makes you lose focus on what's going on. You're sitting or standing or doing whatever you're doing right now on a rock that's floating in the vacuum of space that's, you know, in the perfect area for us to be alive. There's proteins and amino acid chains that are making up your body, molecules that are making up your body. Everything is a perfect system. And in my logical mind, I think we were created. And, you know, when you have a scenario of an alien creating something out of life, that doesn't explain it, like we touched on before. But further than that, I want to just touch briefly on some theories that have been very popular amongst the internet and, uh, you know, various research groups and stuff like that, is uh, the connection between what you would call the fallen angel or demon phenomena with the alien phenomena. Well, let's look at Zachary Stitchin's work, for example. The Sumerians say that these people came from the sky. Okay, they didn't just appear ethereally as their gods. They came from the sky, and they had vehicles, and they had technology, and they had, you know, ways of doing things that weren't just magical. They were mechanical, you know. Um, for example, 
in the Zachariah Stitchin um, epic, if you will, we were created, but we were created with no sex organs. But we are given sex organs by the goddess Ishtar. Now, it's funny to me and also very interesting that the goddess Ishtar is depicted as having a double helix snake by her and what appears to be a test tube in her hand most of the time when you see her. Um, you know, and maybe that's a reference to genetics, you know, genetic manipulation. And I can see where people make the connection that, oh, maybe they're, maybe they made us, but that doesn't make them God. That makes them maybe, what would be a good word for that, a progenitor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, a progenitor of, of races. But somebody created them. Somebody created the universe. Somebody created the complexity of all the information inside of your DNA that's giving your your cells instructions to divide right now as you listen to this. So, you know, another theory that's been pretty popular is that demons are pretending to be aliens so that they can undermine the power of God. I also find that an incredibly interesting theory. Um just because of all the aesthetics in history. Like, for example, the Sumerians depicted the Anunnaki as being people with wings. Christians depict angels and fallen angels as having, uh, and, and fallen angels, excuse me, as having wings. You know, I see a small connection there. No, I see what you're saying. Some people could be abducted and they might think it's a ghost. You know, they, they get the two mixed up because they're just so similar. And so maybe there is something to it. I mean, myself, I prefer to believe that aliens and demons are totally separate entities. But then, I mean, that begs the question, you know, how would they relate to each other? Do demons mess with the uh, aliens? I mean, could they could they be possessed? I mean, can you even imagine that? A, a gray possessed by a demon, like levitating stuff in the air? Yeah, I mean, that's that's really interesting to think about. And also, I'd like to bring up that the word demon and the word alien are just words that we've assigned to these, you know, different type of things that we're trying to describe. They could be one and the same. They could be completely different. Like, like you said, angels and, and demons and aliens, they could all exist. That doesn't stop a demon from pretending to be one. Anyway, we're starting to run long in this podcast here, so I'm going to have to uh, cut it off. But this was uh, a very interesting conversation. This is kind of what we talk about at work. We start out with one topic and end up in, you know, we could talk about rainbows and end up <laughs> talking about a snowstorm. So that's pretty much uh, what we're going to have in a few upcoming episodes. But anyway, thank you all for listening to this one. We are going to um, do another one pretty soon here. I'm not sure exactly what we'll talk about yet, but... Stay tuned for that. Um, I think we'll do some more lighthearted shows in the future. I, I want to do one talking about uh, Dragon Ball Z in particular, and I know there's oh, a lot that. of yeah, I know there's a lot of fans out there who uh, would love to you know kind of listen to this and share in the memories with us. I mean, if you're a true Dragon Ball Z fan, you can just have listen to somebody talk about it, and you'll you'll you know kind of follow along in your mind. So hopefully you enjoyed this one, and uh, it inspired you to kind of look into the area a little bit more. This is what we do the podcast for, is to help you all. Like Carl said, think about what's happening right now. We're sitting on a rock in the middle of space. I mean, just think about it. Look up. When you go to work tomorrow morning, look up in the sky and think about what's happening. Think about everything. Thank you all for listening. I'm Jeff Jarman. That was Carl Studdard. Follow us on Twitter, at JeffJarman55. Uh, follow us on Facebook, The Jeff Jarman Show, Grim Times. We're everywhere, people. Just uh, just look for us. Thanks for listening. Because in in these creation myths, it overlaps with Christianity. It overlaps with Hinduism and Buddhism, um, especially when it comes to the myth about the great floods, you know, that uh, overtook the entire planet. Uh, honestly, what do you think about uh, Sitchin? Do you... Uh, Trust him? Um, it's hard to say. I've never really read his books or looked into his work really deeply, but I know the, the gist of it. I mean, basically that um, the Anunnaki came here and they kind of genetically altered us to be their uh, slaves, essentially the workhorses, to, uh, I don't know, was it to mine gold or mine something out of, out of the planet? Yeah. 
that's what supposedly gold, something about saving their planet. That's what I hear on all the, you know, conspiracy internet sites and whatnot. And um, Sitchin will tell you that we were created just as a slave labor class, really uh, doing all sorts of uh, work all around the planet. And we are simply made for a logistical reason. You know, they can't get their people over here. So create a lower being to uh, alien creator god comparisons i mean a lot of people uh think that we actually were um i don't know if necessarily created by the aliens i mean it's possible but um maybe they are what took the primates and altered with them genetically and they ended up you know with us or i don't know if we would be like a hybrid or uh some sort of deal like that i mean i definitely could see them kind of um messing with our dna a lot of uh people have called it farming almost you know we we would be like their cows essentially i guess but um because you know we could be enhanced by them i i don't know i don't really know how to say it the right way um i'll let you just jump right in here and uh share your thoughts on the subject yeah i mean it seems to me that the whole idea came into being when a uh archaeologist i believe he is uh by the name of uh zachariah stitchin yeah, Sitchin. Yeah, Sitchin. Sitchin. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, Sitchin, you know, and he supposedly can translate these uh, Sanskrit texts from the Sumerian civilization, you know, and uh, according to known history, that's probably the oldest civilization on the earth that they know of right now. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's interesting because. All right, hello, this is uh, the Grim Times Podcast, episode number 16. We are continuing our discussion with Carl. Uh, do you want your last name at all? or is Yeah, it... sure, I'm not afraid of anyone. Okay, yeah, I'm Jeff Jarvin, I'm out there all over the place. So this is Carl Studdard, um next to me, and in the recording studio, our fancy uh, room with a table and a computer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so today we're going to continue our discussion on uh, alien life, and I want to just jump right into it here. We're going to talk about the uh, 